It's Sunday, 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 and that means it's Monster Jam at the old Jamboree. No, no, no. Oh. That's another show. We don't have no mud. We don't got no blood, but we got the all effing wrestling show. What do we got on the show today? Uh, we got we got we got some news. There's a lot of news. It, it seemed barren at first, but there's actually a decent size amount of news, and there's more than one royal family of professional wrestling. We're going to list our top 10 families of professional wrestling and all their contributions, good and bad. <laughs> all right, without further ado, it's time for the All Effin' Wrestling Show! Hit it! Come to you live from the See you till later. Hello? Get my supper warm. <laughs> yeah, get my supper warm. I needed it. No, I'm sorry, I stole your line. I stole That's your line. All right, I'll let you do it. I'll, I'll only charge you ten bucks this time. All right. And of course, the king of prediction wrestling. Not lately. In my head, I'm the king. <laughs> I'm the JFB, James from Boston. And I am, of course. The patron saint of professional wrestling. I'm the ginger up, bubbly son of a bitch. I'm Ken F and Dry. And I'd like to give a shout out to my boy, Bad Take Kate. Uh, rumor is, uh, if you say his name three times, he yeah. shows up. So, uh, this is the one time we can't be saying it anymore. Okay. Well, this guy right here in the corner. The one that personally knows the rowdiest, the rowdiest of all of the rowdies. He knows Roddy Roddy Piper. So he's got a picture with him, for God's sakes. Of course he knows him. The most Scott. What's Hello. Up? Alex Haley, how the hell are you doing this week, my brother? I'm doing it. Thank you. And I've got hey, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to uh, the Salty Bastards Corner this morning. Uh I think I think you we got a special surprise for that. Yeah. Oh yeah, we do. And the I, guy beneath me, the man who needs no introduction only because it will take away from the experience. Talk about Shane. What's going on, my brother? How you doing? I'm doing great this Sunday morning. How about yourselves? Doing good. Doing good. Get got a little chest cold. That's all right. We're gonna persevere. We're gonna power through it because that's what well, I have a little beef with uh with uh, Showtime Shane here. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. So, he is from this beautiful city called Vancouver. Yeah. Well, the Burbs. Huh? The Burbs. Well, the Burbs yeah, of Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, we, we say if you're you're in you're in Greater Vancouver, right? Yeah. Uh, he hates the Canucks. That makes no sense. Uh... He's a bit of a he's a bit of a traitor. I gotta be I, honest. I love I love every other sports team out of Vancouver. I've just been well, except the, the best Canucks. one, <laughs> the most I just important hate, one. I've hated the Canucks organization, and I've hated majority of the fans for years. I've always called them Toronto West. I, I think you're. I think you're. I think you're just a little brainwashed. I don't know what. I don't know what it is, but uh, uh, I mean, I can't really talk. I'm a Flames fan. A glory hunter. 
<laughs> the quarter. But I, hey, I can't like the Canucks did beat the Flames last night in Vancouver too. So I really, it's kind of like guess karma right now for me today. Hey? You know, I maybe maybe we can convert you. No, there's no conversion <laughs> camp for this one. Conversion therapy. <laughs> oh, that's story. Conversion therapy. Well, if we're going to do that, we need to at least work on his, his support for one of the world's most terrible tag. Uh, I'm sorry, the world's most terrible tag team, the Young Bucks. Oh, yeah, that, well, we can do a double, a double, a double, a double that's conversion the, therapy. That's the first place we, we should be putting that, like past the dish on his head, you know. But was it um, where all the wires coming out of it to electrocute him? <laughs> Now, I know, uh, Alex, you think that GFB is D.B. Cooper. Yes. But there is there's a little bit of evidence pointing to D.B. Cooper being a woman. Yeah. Did you see this? Mm. Which, 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 which would throw everyone if D.B. Cooper's a woman. Like, everyone's looking for this bald guy looking like GFB, and it's actually some... Uh, I mean, it'd be a pretty good game plan if you're trying to avoid people. That's for sure. It could be. It could be. You never know. Just saying, it could happen. Well, let's get started. Can't start our main event yet. Not yet. So everybody sit down. It's night one of this podcast. Damn it. Which means we got a great opening match. It's called Devin New. <laughs> From the four corners of the globe, from our studios to your home, this is FNN, the FN News Network, starring Canada Drive and the JFB. So we got Shane uh, doing the weather. Yeah. We got JFB, uh, our main anchor. You got me doing sports, and we got... Alex Haney with his Alex Haney corner. Um, you you got you got a special video that that you want want us to play. Yeah, I found a I found a I found a video of Tony Khan talking about the Legend of Zelda. So, oh, interesting. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so is he reviewing this game? He's reviewing it. You know, he's 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 reviewing it. It's one of my favorite games as well. So I think. If you play the video, you, you, you hear what you've got to say about it. All right. You want to play that, JFB? <coughs> Hi, everyone. It's Tony Khan here. This week, I review a classic from my childhood. Uh, one of my favorite games of all time is Legend of Zelda on the Nintendo. The game was first released when Hulkamania was running wild in 1987. Anyways, the game itself is based in a very dark place called AEW, where many years ago a tag team called the Young Bucks appeared. They have since became what can only be described as the worst team ever to compete in any wrestling ring. Anyways, it's up to Link to save the wrestling world from the Bucks and their idiot friends. I give it nine and a half stars. So fuck you, Meltzer and the Young Bucks. I'm go Vancouver Canucks. Tony Khan is a Canuck fan. Yeah, apparently he's not only a Canuck fan, he doesn't like the EVPs. How can you not like your EVPs? Yeah, that's this is shocking. Like, uh, I, so I Legend of Zelda is actually about the, the uh, stopping the Young Bucks. <laughs> The young bucks suck. Take this. I, I mean, that's just beautiful. That's just, oh, that's just so beautiful. Anyways, first, uh, I'd like to start off our day with a, with a little no duh moment. Uh, according to Road Dog, which you know, right there, right off the bat, this is just going to be full of just whatever, like disco infernal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our uh, road dog says our truth doesn't need a world title, but you could just put the strap on him anyways, and it'd be just fine. Uh, okay, first of all, it, it's mind boggling that he wasted air to give us a statement that we have known for decades that Ron Killings doesn't need a world title. 
That guy is over like Grover, like there is no tomorrow. I mean, the guy's been gone for eight months, comes back, and the fans go nuts every time he shows up. My God. Canada. I think putting a world title on him, though, is like, how would you like? How would you even pull that off? Like a Money in the Bank win, maybe I don't know. Um, yeah. I mean, he technically could steal the Money in the Bank from Priest, yeah. and then just as he's running down the ramp, he steals it, slides in, beats Seth Rollins or whoever, and our truth becomes the world champion. That's how you do it. That's called even if it's even if it's like a, a one day run, it would still be so cool. Oh, it would That'd be, be hilarious. You, you you know uh, was it, uh, obviously the money in the bank uh, stories changed, but if you remember back to when he got the senior bit, uh, it, it 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 shows you him getting it and it's zooming out from the, the traditional money in the bank sitting. Uh, what was it sitting there and then straight back into it and then it faded out as if this. So I've, that's always been in my back of my mind. Somebody's got that, you know. Yeah. So uh, maybe maybe our truth maybe maybe he turns heel and it turns out he's been playing us all along. You just don't know. You know, that would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, just think about this. He steals the briefcase. He cashes it in. He wins. Yeah. They take the belt away from him, and then he decides to become the black Cody Rhodes and talks uh, about how he wants to finish his story. And he wants to do it for John Cena. He wants to finish <laughs> John Cena's story, and he's going to do it by God. And you see him in suits all the time, and oh, my God. This would be the greatest thing in the world. Is our truth being a world champion and then having to finish his story at WrestleMania? Yeah, would be I, just brilliant. I would, I would actually be a biggest swerve of all times. Like something that does, like because WWE has been super predictable the last five years, I'd say. So but the day after Mania, yeah, truth comes out. It's time to finish my story. <laughs> yep. I'm just saying, like it's. I mean, the possibilities. Are, are absolutely endless. I mean, look, he took a trash belt and made it worth something with the 24-7 championship. Yeah. You know what would be also would be funny is if uh, our truth after his contract's done, he shows up at AEW and, like, says, I'm going to cash in on the WWE <laughs> world title. And they're like, what are you doing here? You don't even work here. He's like, oh, my bad. My bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be brilliant. All right, next, next bit. Um, the Rock denies the what he calls horseshit reporting that the report that TKO told him to follow PG thirteen guidelines. I mean, Canada Drive makes sense of it. I I think that Rock has a path, uh, a free pass to do whatever the hell he wants, yeah. and from looking at it. He's inducting uh, his his grandmother into the Hall of Fame. There's all sorts of things happening. Uh, a little bit of nepotism happening, but it's The Rock. Yeah. I there's mean, nothing, there's nothing wrong with nepotism. I mean, yeah. AEW wouldn't exist without nepotism. Yeah, well, I'm not saying, it's, it, it, and I'm saying it's The Rock. But Certain I, people should get free passes. It's just you know what? Is. Just TKO in general, they're going to have pe certain people under their umbrella with. Uh, Free passes like Dana White on the USC. He swears in a lot of press conferences in the <laughs> interview that's being broadcast around the world. But and you, you know what? Nobody <laughs> tells him to tone it down. And he's yeah. worth millions and millions. So, like, you know what? There's always going to be people under that TKO umbrella just because of what position they hold in the company, like whether it's UFC or WWE or whatever brands. They, they also own that, like, yeah, there's going to be certain guys who are going to get the free pass. This is what we really need. We need the superstar PCB's opinion. Let's let's see what he has to say. Bring him on. Superstar. Oh. What's up, everybody? So what, what do you think about The Rock? And, oh, the mask. Ooh. He's got the mask ready for you. Okay. So what what do you think about the the Rock um, not having to follow mm. PG rules? Um, I know he's um working with the the worst man ever, Vince McMahon, and I hear because the Rock needs to go home because this is what Roman Reigns is basically watching the Rock to finish Twenty Walls 
at WrestleMania 40 is coming up next month. So I don't know what's going to happen, but I see, I see my eyes on the lock. Okay. Caleb, what do you think of the rumor that uh, Eva Marie beat up the Green Power Ranger? <laughs> oh! We're not talking about we not talking about power issues. This is all effing wrestling. It's about wrestling. <laughs> but even Mira is a wrestler. She's yeah. one of the best female wrestlers ever. Yeah, she did beat up the Green Power Ranger. Miss <laughs> Mobile Peace. And, and, and the Green Power Ranger did challenge CM Punk, so he clearly he wanted to be a wrestler. But he yeah. wasn't good. CM Punk is coming back tomorrow night. Hey, uh, Caleb. Caleb. Power Rangers suck. Oh. oh. Hey, hey, guys, guys. I, as a weatherman, I just want to give a quick weather update. It looks yeah. like the sun, the sun's starting to uh, shine in. It was uh, a little body of rain earlier. What's the game you're playing there? What's what's the game on the, on the screen? Oh, I got Indy car racing on at the same time. Nice, nice. Caleb, yeah. Caleb, I know it was Down Syndrome National uh, Day, was it, I think, on Thursday. Did you do anything for it? Were you doing anything... I have some ice cream and titty tanners for um, dinner, and I was on um, TV. Awesome. Oh, nice. Uh, a happy uh, National uh, Down Syndrome Day. Uh, thanks for coming on the show today. Uh, we'll, we'll see you uh, next show. Yes, sir. You got, you got to die. See you later. See you. All right, let's get to our next thing. Kevin Nash, five weeks sober. Guy gave up alcohol, one of the toughest things to give up. So congratulations. Thumbs up, Kevin Nash. Going ahead. Oh. <laughs> uh, Beck says that her relationship with Charlotte Flair is good. Not great. Not bad. It's good. We'll, we'll go ahead and take that. Um, who wants to... If there was one opponent you could pick as a dream match for Jake Cargill, who would it be? Can it dry? Uh, my dream match for Jade Cargill would be this woman right here. Lunatic! <laughs> you are going one-on-one -on -one with Jade Cargill. <laughs> You're right. Play a play a play a. <laughs> but that I'm... one on one was the Jade one. <laughs> I'm surprised Haney's not saying Eva Marie right away. Eva Marie's uh, Eva Marie is, uh, has earned her time off. Yeah, <laughs> she, uh, she's she was just phenomenal in the last run. Just leave leave the yeah, women alone. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. And I don't think Tiff could tie her shoelaces. So yeah. No, definitely not. I don't think she'd want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for a previous topic about our truth. I do oh, yeah. want to see him have a serious run with a title yeah. right before he retires. I agree. Um, he had a serious he, run. It was the 24-7 title. Yeah, the greatest, but the greatest that, yeah, title. No, no, it, 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 the world title. Hey, 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 hey. He was a former NWA world champion when he stepped away from WWE yeah, for a cup of the, coffee. And that's the reason why I want him to have one serious run in a WWE because that run was really good. Yeah. And I like seeing a serious side of our truth before he gives calls it a day. But let's let's be honest. There's no way in hell they're gonna do it. No. You know what? Just just like I've heard you say about the Miz, like he's just a serious mid Carter. I mean, Truth is great to have around as your veteran, yeah. but he's can't. He's not someone you could book a main event around. He's not gonna. He's not gonna sell out WrestleMania. He's not gonna sell out other pay per views as the headline marquee. Like, I'm sorry. It's, I, I mean, I, he's a great person. But about Kofi Kingston, and that guy had a decent run as a world champ. She was so yeah. mad, she just left. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you don't blame her. You guys are talking down or you mansplained. <laughs> we mansplained you, Tim. Man if you want to come back, uh, you can come back. Uh, we'll say we won't mansplain you no more. So, Canada Dry, who would you book for Jay Cargill? Uh, uh, Bianca Belair. Okay, what about you, Alex? Um... Uh, yeah, it has to be Anka Belly. Yeah, that's the that's the natural sort of. Yeah, Mr. Shane. Uh, I mean, the kind of the obvious is Bianca Belair, but I mean, at the same time, maybe Charlotte Flair. Yeah, well, Bianca Belair seems to be the popular choice. 
Bianca Belair did, in fact, talk about this. She said that she would love to take on yeah. Jake Cargill at any point in time. Who doesn't want to see that? Holy cow. Yeah, but it looks like it looks like they're going to be doing possibly a tag match at Mania. Yeah. That's kind of where it looks like they're going with it, yeah. Uh, which, so, which, uh, I don't, which I don't, you know, I guess you get more people on the card, but. Yeah. So uh, Sean Spears says the reason why he picked NXT over AEW is he gets to sleep in his bed every single night. Good for him. I mean, he made he made a bold choice, you know. I mean, let's see how Shawn Michaels and NXT and Triple H use them. I mean, well, let's let's be honest here. Um, Sean Spears wasn't getting used in AEW. No, no, no. So, no. so if you can go to a company and 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 get you, you, you know what? It's good to see though. Know, it's great to see NXT starting to go back a little bit to its roots to have some seasoned veteran guys on the roster because it looked like like once they went to the uh, two point brand, that's yeah. when they, they li- literally got rid of any of the seasoned veterans or the guys that have been around, and they literally just went for the PC guys or guys that have just barely been around. So it's good to see that they're going to have bring back some seasoned veterans that have been around because you know what? It only helps these NXT guys that have guys, experienced guys that have been all over like a Sean Spears. Yeah. Cool. I mean, yeah. really, honestly, I mean, if you really think about it, 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 it makes total sense. Um, on an AEW podcast. <laughs> so, so I we're, we're I not a, an AEW podcast. <laughs> yeah. I I have a I have a theory on it, and and it was sort of discussed in the pod. Uh, it was it another podcast? Uh, what was it here? Um, Tony Khan uh, can can hold a grudge, and if you actually look at what's happened to a lot of Cody Cody, uh, the Cody guys, have not they've not been very successful since. Since maybe MGF, but that's about it. All the other ones that were brought in under the sort of Cody banner haven't done very well in AEW. So, yeah, well, that's the thing about when you're bringing in your friends. Yeah, yeah. but, that, but they're they're not bringing, a- hey, they brought QT Marshall back as a backstage role. Let's face it, when Cody originally met him, that's all QT Marshall was for indie promotions, was just kind of like a backstage guy. He hardly did a lot of wrestling. Like, I mean, QT Marshall was uh, QT. It's quite ironic because QT Marshall was hated by the indie fans, or even on the, even not, what was it online when he was in, doing the sort of Ring of Honor stuff, you know? Yeah. So, um, it, I, I mean, he was seen, uh, b- bizarrely, he was seen as a cornet guy, you know? <laughs> so, what was it called? Um, but that, that's gone back to, that's gone back a while with Ring of I Honor. I think you know, that, like, uh, you know, when you bring in your friends to professional wrestling and they're not, they're just kind of like, okay, we'll bring these guys in to appease you. When you <laughs> leave, you know, they're not really wanted there because you, they were, they were, they were brought no, in as I mean, that's, that's look, look at the Mean Street Posse. Mean Street Posse is a great example of that. How long, had, how long did those guys last? <laughs> but they, they, they weren't actually Shane's friends. <laughs> They were just a couple of indie guys, I think. But um, Shaw, uh, what was it was uh, Sean Spears. But was it? Um, I mean, he had. A, he, I mean, he, it's not as if he didn't have a buzz about him at the time, you know. Yeah. Uh, but was it, um, he was one of the guys that had a big buzz about him after leaving WWE. But like I've said before, if you go to multiple promo- promotions and it doesn't work out for you, you can't always blame the promotion. Something's yeah. got to be done. No, exactly. Tesla, you know. Uh, what was it? Uh, yeah. That's my opinion on it. Well, it's true because he was in the original WWE reboot of uh, ECW, and yeah. then was kind of like go, and then like go, and then came back, got very popular in the NXT Gold brand. Once he went to what was it SmackDown, didn't translate. Boom, gone. Went to AEW, started got got popular with the feud with uh cody rhodes which i mean that was a good way to bring him in having him just smashed cody and they have the chair and then look look at the accidental damage that did too which kind of brought in headlines and stuff but then yeah kind of fizzled out after the whole pinnacle so yeah yeah like i don't i don't think he he really did uh much to get himself over especially on the mic yeah no, he, he was not he's still not very good on the mic no no no, yeah, I think I think if he would have been better on the mic, it it would have all flowed better. If he had a maybe he had some manager, somebody speaking for him might not be a bad. Well, thing. he did. Yeah, he had like, Tully. Oh, yeah, no, having Tully didn't hurt. That, that's for sure. 
Yeah, yeah but Tully, Tully, Tony had to let um, Tully go because he was eating into his stash. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get to our next one. Rumor has it that the Hardys may appear at WrestleMania 40 in a tag match. Thoughts? Well, is it? Uh, I know, I know Matt Hardy's contract is ending this month. Yeah. But is, Jeff's probably isn't. Well, no, not. Jeff Nolan voided his contract technically when he started drinking up like a storm. Yeah, no, but if you bring him back and he's already. Yeah, he's wrestling. on a pay per, he's on a pay per play contract. Is he really? Yeah. 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 The only, the only, he's, he's basically in a similar situation. He's, it was in the WWE, which everybody crapped on WWE for. Um, what was it? Um, and, and wanted me to do this sort of test. Uh, what was it? Um, but obviously. HR will be, t- I mean, NWWE and uh, EW, they would have been telling Tony, <laughs> listen, you can't just let the, you can't just lose the guy. You've got to give him a chance when he comes back because it doesn't look good, you know. Yep. I mean, the guy's, the guy's battling all these demons, you know. I think the wrestling world is not good for him. He should go away and do his music and stay away from wrestling because it's obviously a wrestling's an enabler for him. He's around. Oh, well, yeah. When, you, when you're dealing with pain, right? When you yeah. got to battle pain every night, that's one easy way. You mask it with things like drugs and alcohol. I was the biggest thing back in the 80s and 90s. Like, yeah. killed a lot of wrestlers today. And honestly, the Hardy Boys, uh, uh, as much as I want to see uh, Edge and Christian versus the Hardy Boys, um, I don't it's even not really worth it to, uh, to hold up a roster spot, two roster no. spots. No. So, I, I, you know what though, it's just like only reason why these rumors started because of Matt Hardy was just in the one of the uh, luxury suites at Raw. But I mean, it was no different than yeah. Bailey being at one of the luxury seats at AEW for yeah. Mercedes debut it, the other week. So. Exactly, but Hardy was Hardy was just getting himself out there because he knows his contracts up. He's a veteran and he was playing. This, he was playing the system. That's what he was doing. He was just playing. Yeah. Dutch, you know, it was probably one of his friends that was down taking the picture in the first place. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's get to a couple more really quickly. Uh, so uh, Netflix is still moving forward with the Vince McMahon documentary, regardless of the Janelle Grant situation that's going on. They still plan on finishing and airing a multi-episode documentary about Vince McMahon. Well, wouldn't you, wouldn't you want to keep it going and add all that shit to it anyways? Yeah, I think you should. I think they will, probably. Uh, yeah, you, 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 you can't not mention it. Yeah, yeah, Goldberg was in the news. Here's what Goldberg had to say on a recent podcast. Some, when uh, asked about his uh, streak being beaten by Asuka, Goldberg proceeded to say, some Japanese girl beat my undefeated record and proceeded to trash the WWE for making that happen. He trashed a Japanese wrestler that will go down in the history as one of the greats, if not greatest, Female wrestlers, Japanese or otherwise. Yes. The history yes. of professional wrestling. Let's discuss yes. this. How much of an idiot Goldberg really is. Canada Can Jack, your favorite wrestler. Yeah, go ahead. Go first. Alex. The guy is an absolute arse. That's what he is. Yeah. You know, I agree. First off, Oscar actually had a, a, an undefeated streak that actually, a, what was it, accumulated in. Proper match numbers and days meant something. that meant something that led to, what led to WrestleMania, which was one of the biggest travesties in wrestling, in my view. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, um, so that's the first thing. Second thing, Oscar is not only Oscar is not only the best female wrestler on the planet. She's probably one of the best wrestlers on the planet. She's proved that. She's went out. Go look, watch the matches with Mamoru Suzuki. Now she didn't. She didn't go over in that match. I won't spoil it, but that's how mixed tag. That's how a mixed tag match should be done. It's absolutely brutal. It's a, and it's a, just absolutely amazing match to watch. And she held her own in that ring. Uh, what was yeah. it? It, it, it? It's just pure wrestling storytelling. So I, I can't understand where Goldberg's coming from this perspective. You know. I think it's a very disrespectful knowing uh, him knowing where where what was it, uh, his love for uh, the sort of martial arts as well in MMA knowing what uh, Oscar was about. She wasn't about Joshi. She's she was actually hated in in Japan because yeah. she was against the Joshi movement. Yeah. Stardom yeah. was basically formed to blackball ball her out of wrestling. 
So she yeah. created her own, uh, what was it, company. And it's, you know, I, I'm absolutely disgusted that Goldberg would come out and say this. I agree. Yeah. I, I, ahead, I, I, I said yesterday, I, like, I met, we were talking about it Friday, me, you, and I, Liam, but then I also made a guest spot on uh, Isaac's and Liam's show yesterday because there's something I've remembered that really pissed me off. How Goldberg's going off lately. Not only about that, about how WWE mistreated him, Vincent Triple H. No, screw you. You caused the fiend on one of his, uh, the hottest runs possible going in WWE in years. You lobbied and politic your way into winning a universal title. You can't say you've been mistreated by them when they gave you a silver platter title what, with one of the biggest, and that, that, that really killed the fiend right there and then. That really buried that character on that freaking uh, quick well, come show. Fair, Seth Rollins did it too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, but it's a little bit different with that one compared to the gold. Like, it made I don't no know, sense. They're both pretty bad. They are. Ah, don't get me wrong. They are. But, I mean, that just pissed me off. And then the fact that he also he was involved with the Kevin Owens thing, too. Yeah. Like, I, 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 let's not forget Randy Orton basically murdered him in the ring with Petrol. And- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's hear Let's hear what uh, Lunachev has to say. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I was abruptly interrupted. Um, sorry about that. I did not mean to. It was just like, oh, my gosh. But what did you anyway, eat for lunch today? What did you eat for lunch? You said you were eating lunch. A burrito. Oh, burrito. Ooh. Anyway, um, yeah. Um, Joe Berg, I have tried to give this dude a chance, like, as a person, because despite him not being too great of a wrestler and that fuck up with Bret Hart. I tried to, you know, kind of forgive him for what he done to Bret and all that stuff. And he seemed like a nice enough guy, a great dad to his son. Nonetheless, I still think he might be a great dad to his son. Um, he obviously loves his boy, but he just seems so much of an asshole. Like, he, I always thought that he was a nice guy, and now his true colors are starting to show to me. Um, you know, it kind of sucks. And plus, what he done said about Asuka is uh, giving microaggression. Uh, just, I don't know. I'll tell you an old school about Goldberg from, from uh, WCW Thunder video game. Yeah. So my brother, my, my brother's not a wrestling fan, and I was playing the game, and I was playing the, all the videos before the thing, and my brother goes, uh, "Wow, that guy comes across like a pedophile." Yeah. <laughs> wow! Yikes! So, that, uh, yeah, I, I just thought I just remember that old story. So it's kind but of yeah, um, also. That um, him beating the fiend like that, Bray Wyatt. Um, yeah. that one time, I never could get past it. It's still, I'm still salty about that stuff, right Are there. Are you related like, to Alex Haney? <laughs> Can I, I have a Are question? You an American yeah, cousin? I'm still salty about him being the fiend that one time myself. Oh. Um, so overall. Screw Goldberg. I'm done with this guy. Tiffany, I have a question for, for, yes. question for you. What did you make of Tony Khan's amazing review of The Legend of Zelda? I can't really hear you. Sorry. What? What did you make of What did you make of Tony Khan's review of The Legend of Zelda? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thumbs up. I guess. <laughs> he doesn't like it. Mm. It's Tony Mid. Khan. It's Tony Khan. Come on. It's Tony Khan. And plus, oh. the, the, from what I've read, Tony Khan loves Goldberg. So, all in this year. Oh, how horrible would that be if Goldberg oh, oh, oh. I cannot see him coming in AEW I, still. I, I don't think he ever will. It might be for a visit for like... You know what, Maybe though? he could be special guest ref for a match or something like that, but I don't see him wrestling. If, if he shows up for a match, if he shows up for a pay-per-view like all in, 
I'd be the perfect time for me so I could go out, have a piss, have a smoke, grab a fresh beer, maybe go grab some nachos. Like that. Oh, so we need a match. Honest, we need that's exactly what I was giving the young bucks are wrestling. <laughs> but let's be honest here, Shane. The match would be under five minutes, so you got time for a piss break and maybe you pour a beer. Yeah. And what yeah. also yeah, exactly. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, but also what pisses me off as a wrestling fan is that they compare us to um being happy about an old school showing up at AEW, but bitch when Goldberg shows up and WWE and calling us hypocrites. But what I gotta say about that is that it's al always an unpleasant experience seeing Goldberg coming back. But when an old scorer comes to AEW, it's always a pleasant experience. Before you go, I have to say this Mountain Dew sucks. Oh. Mountain Dew is great. <laughs> Mountain Dew is the best. Drink now. now when, when was the first time you tried Mountain Dew, Tiffany? Whenever I was a child. Do you remember the first can of Mountain Dew you drank? Mm hmm. And how um, I used to I used to steal them from my uncle's uh, lunch uh, box. Oh, <laughs> does he know about this? Did he does now. Um, <laughs> they you know that let me have one. <laughs> and then I was just like, I'm thirsty, and I didn't want any tea, so I just went and get her got one. <laughs> Did you know right. that Mountain Dew is made from the tears of unicorns? What? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tiff. We'll see you later. We, do we have any news left? No, we're done. All right. Hey, All right. I'll see you guys. See you later. As a quick weather man, I gotta say it's cherry blossom season in uh, Vancouver area right now. All right, cherry blossoms. Japanese cherry, Japanese cherries blossoms. Where it at? The people flock from where? People flock from wherever just to get photos of it. And you, and oh, you yeah. meant to wash it? And you meant to clean your boots with that to shine it up with the cherry blossom? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, bud. <laughs> All right, but let's go. Let's go ahead and do what we do best, eh? And that's go to our amazing main event of the evening. Oh yeah, bud. <laughs> Wrong intro, hey, bud. Wrong intro. <laughs> yeah. Gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. So let me just say this before you 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 go on here, uh, Jiffy. Mm -hmm. We need a little bit of an update on the pictures and the videos in that main event. Yeah, we do. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like some old shit. <laughs> he's gonna work on that. Yeah, maybe he's got some uh, some stuff to do. But yes, there's, there's stuff from season one in that thing. <laughs> there's some stuff from like zero season in there. Yeah, yeah. JB will take care of it. Don't have to worry about it. So, anyways, uh. What's the main event all about this day? Well, you know, as Cody Rhodes says in his in his music package, which is performed by the band Kingdom, is that there's more than just one royal family of professional wrestling. And that is exactly what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the most influential families. We're going to do top 10 style. We haven't done that in a while. Yeah, we haven't done a top 10. In, we haven't done a top 10 in a long freaking time. Like season two, halfway through, that's when we stopped. We're like, ah. We, well, we need to bring a top 10 list every once in a while, right? Yeah, we got to keep you guys on your toes. Got to keep you entertained. So, uh, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and start with number 10, and we're going to talk about the funks. Uh, now, for those who don't know, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give away the names of the, of the people in the family. Back in a minute, guys. And then we're gonna go ahead and do, um, then we're gonna go ahead and do championships that they've won, and then what they mean to wrestling. That's how we're gonna do this. So, family members of the Funk include Dory Funk Senior, or classic Dory Funk, yep. Dory Funk Junior, Terry Funk. 
Uh, here's some of the accolades. Uh, each brother won the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, 10 pounds of gold. Uh, outside of that, uh, we're talking about an ECW World's Heavyweight Champion in, in Terry Funk. Uh, we're talking uh, ECW Television Champion. They are all in the Hall of Fame, in WWE's Hall of Fame. Um, I mean, the, the list goes on and on, but that's some of the great accomplishments. Canada Dry, let's talk about the good old Funks. Well, you can't talk about the Funks without talking about uh, Terry Funk and this guy really like he's pretty much the Bret Hart of the Funks like he he his longevity in professional wrestling is like no other like Chainsaw Charlie uh, people think Sting went for a long time no Terry Funk went longer yeah oh hell yeah like Terry Funk you remember WCW the old age outlaws yep. <laughs> oh my goodness uh, like like these these guys, I think at WrestleMania two, Dory Funk and Terry Funk versus yep. the Hart Foundation. Yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah, yep. But yeah, the the Funks, uh, like what they brought to professional wrestling, uh, is that gritty, uh, hardcore style. Yep. Um, hell, hell of a hell of a wrestling family. Yep. Um, this I really wish I would have had to add this up on this list because this is a stack list when you put Funks at ten. Because yeah. especially there is so much, as you say, for Terry Funk to do over the year. I'm pretty sure it was he was on the first, or he was he was either on the first one or one of the major ECW pay per views, which helped build that. Even though Terry Funk was like 50 plus then when that ECW then happened, like and he was like still doing insane mental stuff. I was on Beyond the Ring, that yeah. documentary, that match, showing his like kids showing his adult kids still like crying well it's more the daughters but in the mother but there's wife but crying in the background while they're watching them just getting blasted with a chair what did not only what they meant to the territorial wrestling system back in the day and nwa yeah. what terry and what terry meant to ecw but what terry meant to hardcore wrestling in general including a lot of his trips over to japan and stuff for that so he's also brought hardcore to North America too, in a lot of ways, and he's had a lot of legendary matches seen against Jerry Lawler with the branding matches and things along that nature. Man, like the, the amount of crazy matches he's had. It's, it's... quick story before Alex Haney yeah. goes. Um, be, the day uh, Terry Funk died, I wore my Terry Funk shirt to work. Just by fluke. It's funny how that, yeah. It's funny how things like that happen. I've had a few events like that. Go ahead, Alex. That's why no wear shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Shirtless. Can I can, can, uh, can I tell you a quick story around that? The, yeah. the, the, the day, um, this is no joke. Funeral, funeral always like hates when I say this because because he just doesn't like me saying it. But on the day Michael Jackson died, Fiona was listening to Michael Jackson on the way home. And she was listening to Dirty Diana. Ooh. Right? And the and the the, the, the MP3 player crashed, right? Yeah. So she phoned me to see how to reset it. Okay. Uh, what was it? Um so I told her how to reset it because it was I mean, you had to do like a hard reset on it. Anyways. She, she resumed playing. She played a couple of songs. Uh, it was in, not at Michael's. Then she went back to Michael, and it crashed again. <laughs> so, you want to murder Michael Jackson? <laughs> so, so we got a we got a, a strange pe person uh, showing up on the, the the comments here. I just saw that right now. Oh, yeah, forever. <laughs> oh my god! I think that might be Joseph H. Gary. Okay. <laughs> I, I, what do you, what does Hogan's tights smell of though? I don't want to know <laughs> because he fucked a lot of bullshit. <laughs> yeah, must be thoughts on the Funk family, uh, Alex. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I digressed as usual. Um, <laughs> the, the, the punks, the, the, the punks, the, 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 the funks really are sort of like. I think, I think, 
A lot of us don't really what was the aim. A lot of us fans that came around in the 80s, particularly me, didn't really know what the funks were because it was a long time before I had really seen what him and his brother and that was doing, you know, because um, I didn't really see it until I started sort of trading into the 90s. But at that point, I knew who Terry Funk was in terms of Japan. Uh, what was it? Um, uh, and the sort of the, the hardcore element. But people uh, people forget how how, an, how much of an accomplished sort of uh, what was it, a technical wrestler Terry was, like his brother Dory and things like that. It's just, it, it's like two different wrestlers, you know? So the, the, the story of, of the Funks is just really synonymous with wrestling. It's so important. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's let's face facts. I mean, Shane talked about it earlier, but ECW wouldn't be where it was or where it was eventually going to go if it wasn't for Terry Funk. The decision to put the belt on Funk that early in the game at their very first ever pay-per-view tells you everything about Terry Funk. And while he may be the most famous out of all that family, Dory Funk Sr. and Dory Funk Jr. were nothing to snuff at. I mean, those guys were hardcore too. Yeah. So... They meant more to the territory systems, right? Like back back before the day, like before that all got killed, the territories were all there were a major impact to it. Yeah, here's the I thing: think we, we just focused on Terry Funk because yeah. he's what we know. Yeah, yeah. he's the yeah. biggest man. He's the yeah, that's the thing. He's he's the one that's lasted the longest. If you also yeah. want to take a look at it too, right? Yeah, absolutely. I've got a question for, I've got a question for you guys. Do you think if Paul Heyman ever gave Terry Funk a bounce check? <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah there's no doubt about it. I mean, let's and be then, honest. And then when Terry Funk calls him up to tell him about it, oh, hey, I got uh, Jimmy Snooker on the other line. I'll, I'll call you back. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, I'll get you back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get to number nine. We're going to talk about the Wyndham family now. Yeah. It's probably not the most well-known name, per se, but... Here are some of the people that are members of the Wyndham family. We're talking Blackjack Mulligan of the Blackjacks. Kendall Wyndham, Barry Wyndham, IRS. We're talking about Bray Wyatt. We're talking about Bo Dallas. We're talking about the Wyndham family. Here's some of the stuff they've won over the years. Uh, NWA United States Championship five times. NWA World Tag Team Championships one time. WWE Tag Team Championships six times. Uh, Tag Team Champions galore. Uh, multiple WWE championships, NXT championships. Let's go with Alex Haney. Hey, Mr. Haney, your thoughts on the wonderful Wyndham family? Yeah. So, uh, uh, but was it, I know some of you will probably want to focus on sort of brain things like that. So I'll start off with Bo. I, I remember uh, watching the uh, it was it the Florida Championship Wrestling uh, and talking about well, uh, sort of another sort of a son of a, a legend. Uh, Richie Steamboat. Uh, unfortunately, Richie got sustained an injury, obviously, that resulted in him not being able to pursue a wrestling career. But Bo Dallas is an absolutely phenomenal wrestler. I agree. And, yeah. uh, it was, uh, and it's just an, an absolute shame when he finally came up, he was given a bit of a joke gimmick, you know, that he's never been able to shake off. And, and it seems to be something the Wyndhams seem to, <laughs> seem to get. I mean... Uh, but Barry, uh, uh, Barry, along with sort of for me for like Bobby Eaton and like guys like Owen Hart and things like that, were way ahead of their time, you know. Uh, but was it, and and the promoters just didn't know what to do with them really because they were just, I, they, they were they, they were modern wrestling before modern wrestling was here, you know. So, um, uh, IRS, you know, I can't. Uh, but was it, um, can't believe what was it. Um, but was it uh, the only real run I know of uh, with IRS? Uh, was it uh, initially that I knew of was with that uh, was with the Million Dollar Man. Uh, again, it was years before I seen what he was doing, you know. So it, it's hard it, hard for me. I let you sort of talk about the other guys and brain. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, let's go, with Shane. Shane, your thoughts on the Wyndham family. Yeah, well, I didn't know how we were going to set this up today, but I was making a putting a list together. The Window Rotunda legacy was definitely on my list because let's just face it, it's not even just Bray and Bo alone. It's been generational of each family member having their moment or their success, whether it was territorial days, WCW, WWF, and all, and then yeah, like it's a shame. That yeah, Bull Dallas didn't really translate over in the 
main roster. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? Like Bray's all, like one of my favorites of all time, just especially the theme character. So and just like kind of like the Funk family, Terry kind of takes away from the other legacy while Bray definitely took away. And then unfortunately with his passing, it sucks. We just we lost him too soon to be able to see how he was going to progress even more from the newer character and stuff. So does anyone know how uh, Barry Wyndham and Mike Rotunda are related? Uh, um, marriage. Yeah, one married the other, and that's, yeah. One married the other's sister. And not each other. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no, no. No, they were they definitely... Were they, they were they the U.S. Express for a weird ways. <laughs> yeah, they definitely did not produce a child together. That's for that's. You, you, okay. you saw the stereotype in there, uh, Canada Dry, because it come from the swamp. <laughs> there you go. I, the south, yeah. Canada, what you can Dry? Your thoughts on the Wyndham family? Like the, the, this family is like you. You don't even have to mention Bray and uh, Bo Dallas, uh, mm -hmm. and you got the Rotundos, uh, IRS, like. He's a huge name all on his own. Uh, Barry very, Wyndham. Yeah. Barry Wyndham. Like, this guy, to me, is what a pro wrestler looks like. Yeah, he was. Like, he was – I don't feel – I feel like he should have got more uh, more uh, time at the top. He should have been yeah. more of a main adventure. Um, like, I think if Hulk Hogan wasn't there, he would have been right there at the top. Yeah. I feel like – because he was blonde-haired and big. I yes. think really we can't forget the West Tex Texas Rednecks too. Yeah. He was part of that crew. Yeah, he was. He I, was. I mean, was it Barry Wind guys like Barry Windham and Bobby Eaton probably were ten years too too early, you know? Because yeah, they would have been phenomenal in the new new gen uh, the next sort of new generation area in the WWF, you know. Um, you know, but uh, so. Uh, they're just so talented, you know. You know just yeah, so look at the, look at the the four the four people in that. Like you got Bray Wyatt, you got Bo Dallas, you got Michael Trando, you yeah. got uh, you got uh, Barry Wyndham. Like those are you can build a whole faction around that. Like it's top yeah. stars. Besides the grandfather and all that too. Yeah, like yeah. I don't know much about them, but yeah, yeah. huge huge names in, in the wrestling. Yeah. Game. All right, let's go to our next family. We're going to be talking about the well, guys like to put it on their neck. Sometimes on the wrist. Talk about the Colognes from Puerto Rico. Here are some of the family members. We got the patriarch, Carlos Colon, the man who started off. Might also be the guy who went ahead and actually had Bruce Brody killed. Uh, Carlito, Primo, and Epico are all part of this family. Nobody was allowed to wrestle or start a promotion in Puerto Rico. There was only one. And that was and that was uh, Carlos Colones. So let's go, to Shane. Shane, talk about the Colones. We're gonna. I'm gonna have to kind of separate the art from the artist for a second. But yeah, I mean, Carlo did mean a lot to the Puerto Rican scene back in the day, despite being a shady as hell person with a lot of bad ties in the long run. You know, and it's that, almost like that. Just want to comment quickly on that. It's yeah. almost like a mafia like hold yeah. on, on the on the, on the territory. Exactly. It was definitely like the Puerto Rican mob kind of or gangster sort of thing. But you can't deny how many cuts that guy's on his head, man. Yeah. Like that guy obviously bladed, but man, he must have bladed deep to have that many folds on his head over the years. But I mean, you know what? There's no doubt about it legitimately if you wanted to see violence and blood you went to puerto rico to watch wrestling yeah well and that's the thing the puerto rican fans themselves taking things like batteries and things along that nature to throw off the wrestlers while they're okay. wrestling and, stuff. and i mean they're still doing those things to this day in my in puerto rican baseball and things along that nature too yeah. so but yeah. um i mean i mean you I, just have to just have to look at the event wwe uh, what was the had in puerto rico last year huge. and why 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 the WWE haven't looked at that and says, right, this is what our, we need our crowds to be doing everywhere, you know? It was just, it, you know, it was just phenomenal. That, that was just, just the atmosphere was absolutely amazing, you know? Um, yeah. But, um, you know, there is, obviously there's controversy around the sort, the sort of colognes and what happened there. Yeah. And, uh, it was uh, a lot of people... 
I didn't go back. A lot of people said they didn't go back. I mean, Dutch, Mantel, what was it? Uh, obviously booked a long time inside, uh, what was it, Puerto Rico as well. So yeah, to- uh, Tony Atlas. Yes, you know, and yeah. and, and, and well, we've got this sort of Brody murder as well, but um, uh, what was it? Um, th- there's a lot more to that story than than, than is ever told. You know, we all ever, ever hear the one side of it, you know, and it's a horrific and it certainly shouldn't have happened what happened, you know, but yeah. Uh, the, the whole politics of re- uh, the whole politics of wrestling. If you look into it, uh, it was um, y- you can't justify it, but you can see why it possibly might have happened if, if that scenario is correct. You know, um, but not that that condones it. It's absolutely horrible. You know, but um, I mean that's to, that to sort of uh, what was it? Sort of Western wrestling fans is what what Puerto Rico was about was that specific thing and it's a shame because there's some phenomenal wrestlers coming out of Puerto Rico you know yeah. and some phenomenal uh, world, world champions as well yeah. yeah but I mean nothing can deny that like the Carlito has always been a great character yeah and I, I respect the hell out of the cousins too or his brother and then his cousin too like they are they are talent it's just they've never properly got put over in the North American scene yeah can you draw your thoughts oh yeah like the, the the colognes, uh, they they held that mafia like uh, territory uh, in 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 Puerto Rico. I, what what blows my mind is that WWE after that event are not planning to go back for a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like like I would be all over that. Like I would set up a pay per view there once a year. Yeah, because that was electric. Like yeah. like Carlito coming out. Yeah. Uh, at that event, it it it's so cool. Like uh, Natalia, oh, Selena, Selena and, uh, too. Yeah. That plot for Selena, Selena was huge. Yeah, Natalia Markova and uh, Brian Idol, they are champions in Puerto Rico. I've seen that. And yeah, they they love wrestling in Puerto Rico. Like yeah. they love the crowds in Puerto Rico. It's such yeah. a huge experience to wrestle there. Yeah. Um, and as I said last night on a uh, what was it. Uh, but was it a uh, Liam's podcast? Brian Andrew was absolutely fabulous in the wedding singer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to number seven. By God, we're talking about the Orton family. Here are some of the members. You got Bob Orton Sr., Bob Orton Jr., you got Barry O, and you got Randy. Barry Horowitz was on Orton? No, Barry O. Not Barry oh. Horowitz. Sorry. Well, he, well, he was a jobber too, right? Yeah. And then you got this other guy. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Was, he goes by RKO, Randy K. Orton, Dirty Randy. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Here's some of the championships that maybe some or only one member of WWE <laughs> actually ever had. Yeah. 14-time WWE World Heavyweight Champion, one-time Intercontinental, one-time United States, one-time World Tag Team Champion, uh, Raw Tag Team twice, SmackDown once. Won the Royal Rumble twice, Money in the Bank winner, WrestleMania main eventer, WWE Hall of Famer in 05. Cowboy Bob Orton won all those titles. <laughs> and here's the thing. Bob Orton was- Sr. was no joke. That guy was just a bad mother. Shut your mouth. Nope. I'm only talking about Bob Orton Sr. Canada Dry. Sing the, sing the praises of Randy's better family. <laughs> Than he was. Like I, when I when I was a kid, Bob Orton was was uh, was he was a good mid card solid hand in WWF. Yeah. Like I remember the match he had with Hulk Hogan on Memorial Day on Superstars. Like that was a great match. Uh, like like he he was pivotal in the the flower shop. He was pivotal on uh, on the uh, Piper's Pit part of WrestleMania. Um, Bob Orton was a solid hand. I don't know much about the rest of the Orton family, but Randy Orton is probably uh, one of the the best wrestlers in the game today. Like yeah. his drop kick is 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 probably one of the best uh, next to Okada's. Um, it, he's he's a great psychological wrestler. Can you can you just rewind there a second? Can, what did you just say? I said Randy Orton's. Uh, Dropkick is probably one of the best in the game next to Okada's. I get it's a good drop uh, kick. But it's a, you know what? We're, we're not focused on Okada. We're focused on the Orton. Uh, there are Randy Orton, I, I I didn't like him back in the day, but he's 
there's much I heard. actually have a I have a personal bad experience with back in the day after a rock. Wait, 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 tell it to us. I'm gonna finish sure. up two seconds here. Yeah. Uh, so, so Randy Orton, I, I I I had issues with him, but he seems to have matured. And he's 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 a lot more uh, laid back now, and he's 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 having fun. He's a lot more humble than he used yeah. to be. Yeah, yeah. Alex well, Haney. Yeah, I mean the humble things. I mean everybody talks about like like mentions that sort of nepotism and wrestling and be and it's like it's hard to be humble when you've got a legacy like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, what was it called? You, I mean you're always you're almost expected to go in there and be the hard man that your father was and your grandfather was. Um, so, I, I, not that I condone anything he did, you know. I, I mean, I don't know if you know, but the but was it Randy Orton's favorite wrestler was the Godfather, and when he pooped in, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, was it Tori Wilson's uh, gym bag? He came out of the dressing room and went pooping in easy. <laughs> 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 but anyways, that was a bad joke. <laughs> All right. Shane, you turn my friend. It's funny, like when you're talking about like hating them when he was young. Yeah, I actually had a bad experience at the Pacific Coliseum, mine in Canada, dry hood, after a raw taping. So yeah, this is like he's fresh into evolution then. So he's still young, right before the world title run. But after an event, I had a sharpie, like, and he goes, "What the f do you want me to do with that?" But then at the same time, when there was a chick, like a young hot chick or whatever, asking for an autograph, all signing there. Then he proceeds to take his shirt off and start going like that with his abs. And then he grabs another girl, stands in some random car. I don't know if it's his rental car. It could be actually a patron's part because it's in the parking lot, right? It could be a random patron's. And he's standing there holding this chick up. So that's going to be at least almost 300 pounds on top of somebody's roof of their car. Well, just to show off. So, I, yeah, I used to think he, like, I was an arrogant prick. And you know what? He's been the first to actually now admit, like, he's in the interviews, in podcasts, he's, he, he, he owns it. And that's what, I'm glad to see this transition to somebody growing up over the years because he was kind of just handed everything young. So, you know what? It's easy to – it happens to all the athletes, football players, hockey players, NBA players, MLB. Sometimes when you're praised when you're young and you're throwing all this stupid money – you kind of think, oh, yeah, I am the shit. And it almost it translates into building a big ego. But yeah. no denying that entire family. The Orton family is great. I've, I, I have enjoyed Randy over the years. I've enjoyed watching the Vipers transition over the years. But to be fair as well, at that time, he was also one in one of the biggest heel factions in, the, in wrestling. So uh, I wouldn't have signed your T-shirt either. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Get a sick heel. Well, let's go to our next family. You might have heard of them. You know, some guy came up with really good finishes, and then some guy that was named Goldust, and I don't know. There's a guy out there trying to finish his story named Cody or whatever. So what are this number five? Is this number five? This number, uh, this is number six. Okay, number six. Number six. We're talking about the Rhodes family. Here are the members. Dusty. Dusty Rhodes, you might have heard of him. He's, he's won a couple of championships. Gold Dust, you might have heard of him. He's won a couple of championships too. And Cody Rhodes, you might have heard of him. Talk about finishing something like a story or whatever. <coughs> uh, five times this family has won the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, four times Tag Championship. Um, WCW United States Heavyweight Championship three times. WCW World Tag Team. Uh, WrestleMania main event. Uh, I mean, the, you know, NWA World Heavyweight Championship one time. Uh, let's go to Al Caney. Uh, what do you think about the Rose family, my friend? You know, well, you know I'm a big Cody Rhodes fan. Um, hey, what you even got I your thought? dog named after him. Yep. Uh, and, um, I mean... Gold, uh, but was it um, uh, was it Goldberg? Was a it was such a, a such a transitional champion, uh, not champion wrestler as well. I mean, he broke he broke down boundaries in sort of television. But was it um, granted granted that it had been sort of done in the, the UK and in the territories? But was Adrian Street? But he took it to another level, you know, with yeah. that sort of character. But was it there's there's not there's not much to. 
not much you can really say about Dusty other than that. He's 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 probably a, what was it, a, one of the most important persons ever in wrestling. You know, yeah. um, it's it's interesting because I've done a lot of a, what was it, a, reading and things like that, and a, what was it, a, Dusty Dusty's Dusty's sort of certainly. For one of a better way of putting it, I mean, not to be disrespectful to both, but Chris Jericho was in a similar situation. Dusty was, where he's, he was, you know, where everybody just wants him to go away, you know, and then he came back and uh, what was it? Um, and his legacy sort of been cemented with NXT, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was brilliant. You know, um, what was it called? Like, uh, what was it? I think. Like the hard times oh. promo is is so ominous, but again, that wasn't even the best promo he did in that year. No. You know that it's that was more of a very memorable though. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, it became more famous years later than it, than yeah. than what was it? Uh, what was it? Then actually was at the time. You know, so it just shows you how much. It, so, so just and what I'm getting, I just shows you how much uh, it was. It resonated to different generations. You know, the message that message might not have been as significant back when he made it. Because of other things that was going on, but years later, it had so much importance to the wrestling and and, and sure. wrestlers, wrestling fan. You know, it's a it's a huge part of what wrestling became. Uh, yeah. What was it, um, you know? So to me, Dusty is uh, what was a, a, an example of what happens when you with promos that transition through the generations. But the Rose family is, you can't really dispute as one of the greatest. Yeah. Let's go with Shane. Your thoughts on the on the Cody Rhodes on the Rhodes family? Honestly, it shows again how stacked this list when they're like six. I honestly would have put them higher on my uh, on my personal list, but they're yeah, some of my favorite of all time. People fail to forget too because of the whole gold dust thing. Dustin's WCW runs. Yeah, well, technically, fire. I think they're fourth. We're going backwards, so. Oh, okay, so like. He's had some memorable matches, including the uh, Buckles brawl match in the back of a semi truck. I mean, yeah. as much of a gimmick match as that was, that was a fun match to watch or whatever. It so was it was bad. <laughs> it was bad, but it was fun at the same time. Come on, yeah. yeah um, honestly, I, I've been lo- I've been loving the family, especially when Cody branched off on his own and what he did, like. Not even officially signing in any contract, like an or he could have signed an IR, ROH at first or Impact, but no, he just kind of was a free, semi free agent going to all these places. Yeah. And I was, when he helped set up the all in, calling Meltzer Challenge out. What do you when mean, he won that? Up, it, was, it was all him. He's just yeah. a couple of guys tagging along. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, anyways, when it, he. When Couple of, couple of guys just like, hey, what was it, sort of like hanging on. Oh, Cody's going somewhere. We'll go here. <laughs> anyways, anyways, when he won that NWA championship from all this, I was cheering, man. I was stoked because I didn't think that was actually going to happen. Yeah. But at the same time, I wasn't going to be shocked if that happened just because it kind of – Billy Corgan was trying to rebuild NWA at that time. At the same time, this all in event was something bigger. Big, one of the biggest indie events in history, as you could quote unquote, even though it was kind of a part old school ROH production. Yeah. So, not even just the whole wrestling side of things those guys accomplished, what those guys, have, the families accomplished on the business side, including Dustin's nightmare, fa- or not, you got Dustin, you got the nightmare factory, and you got Dustin's like Texas yeah. promotion going on right now, too, and stuff that's semi successful. So, yeah, yeah, the new, the new, the new young uh, Rhodes uh, tag team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, can I can I just say as well about Dustin? There's a couple, two things about Dustin. I, I think it's a damn shame I never got to see it, see was where the Pullman storyline was going because that was just going to be absolutely off the charts. Yeah. And just got to speak about the amazing journey that Dustin's been on as well. I mean, he's, the guy's fought his demons over the years, and yes, you know, he's such an inspiration. You know. Yes. It was hopefully, hopefully, guys like Kevin Nash and all that look at what Dustin's done and know but, it's it's possible, you know. You know, it's funny. Dustin was actually the original American Nightmare. When WCW yes. had trading cards, there was actual trading cards of Dustin Rhodes, American Nightmare, printed on the trading card. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. 
Let's go to number five. Hey, I, you gotta get the talk. Oh yeah, I can't enjoy. <laughs> I'll I'll be quick. I'll be quick. Okay. Uh, so yeah, what 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 you're looking here is three very iconic wrestlers. Uh, uh, Dustin being the most important. I mean, sorry, Dusty being the most most important, and Gold Dust and all different eras, which is the cool thing. Yeah, like they each have their own little era, and I think that that's so cool. Um, I, what I you you mentioned where you want to see the Pillman uh, Gold Dust thing go. I want to know where the seven thing was going. Yeah, <laughs> with, with, uh, with, with great. So, I, like I, that could have been it could have been something, but he he shit on it. But I, yeah. I would have liked to see some where, where seven yeah. was going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the uh, the 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 Rhodes family. Um, hard to argue that how 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 important they are. Yeah. To professional wrestling, like they're 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 right at the top. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go ahead another and fun another fun match that Dustin was a part of, and Haney's got the guy in his picture. The Hollywood back black back brawl match or whatever yeah. they called it at WrestleMania. Yeah. 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 First cinematic match, you know, because it was filmed like a week before. That was. <laughs> that that kind of was the first cinematic match if you think about things. But but what was most bizarre about that match was when they finally uh, entered the the arena and came into the ring and 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 Roddy stripped him down. He was like, "Why was he wearing that, like lingerie and suspenders?" And <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get to number five. We're going to talk about. There's only two great families. No, we're not at number three. Remember, we're going backwards. No, we're going. Oh, we're going backwards. Yeah. Well, we're at five, so it's five either way. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Right, so here we go. So there's only two families from the state of Texas that changed the way professional wrestling was done. We talked about number 10, the Funks. But now we're going to talk about the family. Seems like tragedy just follows this family. And that is, of course, the Von Erics. Here are some of the members. You have Fritz. You have Kevin, the only surviving son of the Von Erics. You have David, Kerry, Mike, Chris. You have Ross Von Erich, Marshall Von Erich, which, of course, are the sons of Kevin, and Lacey Von Erich, which is the daughter of Kerry Von Erich. They are continuing to uh, bring the Von Erich family in prominence once again. Uh, they uh, Kerry has won the Intercontinental Championship and the NWA World Heavyweight Championship once. Uh, they were inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2009. Let's go with Shane and the Shane experience. You know what? On Eric's. Their, their, their story is kind of absolutely depressing, especially when you watch the dark side of the ring. But, and it, you know what? It was also, too, Carrie, like, what Carrie accomplished, like, that's, I never really got to watch any of the Von Eric stuff live, except for uh, Carrie. I got to watch that area because that was the area I was growing up. Unfortunately, yeah. they had to give him the, Ultimate Warrior knockoff character with the Texas um what was it called again the Texas Texas Tornado, Texas tornado that was it I have a Texas was tornado too. and he was that was when he also lost his leg around that time too you no, know they could no, they could have made an inspirational story about like a him being an amputee and stuff for that no it's like no you got to cover that crap up and no, stuff for that. No, I, no. Can I just can I just say it, it was him himself that didn't want. I mean, it was years later that people found out that he would lost his foot. Uh, what was it? Um, and it, I think when that he had lost it before that run had started, you know. So yeah. nobody nobody knew that nobody knew that, that that was the case, you know. He was worried. I think. Yeah, he was worried that he yeah. was going to get fired. He was worried he was going to get fired. You know. So. Yeah. Um, what was it called? It's it just a, it's just a shame. It's just yeah. a shame. I don't it, was a, it was a shame that he couldn't be a Von Eric. He had to be packaged as something else. That's what the really shame was with the WWF and the treatment of Von Eric's back in the day. So that's that's what I'll say about it. Well, right. to, to me, I, what was it, that that side of things that what was it, I don't I I have a different opinion on you know. Uh, what was it called? If you're if you're the competition, and you and you and let's and let's be honest, but was it uh, the but was it the the father was one of the guys that was trying to put Vince out of business before it all took off, you know? Yeah. So, uh, what was it called? Uh, what was it? If you're going to play hardball, 
you know, you need to make sure that you 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 able to get through the whole the whole the whole the whole game, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, what was it to me? It's difficult. I'm in the same situation as you. Uh, what was it, Sean? What was it? Um, I never seen much of the Von Eric stuff until years later. Yeah, uh, same. Yeah. And uh, what was it? Uh, the matches you do see more commonly are not are the, are, are, are the, the the big ones. You know, so you don't get to see the the extent of the feuds and things like that. You need to go out and find them, and it's so hard to find. You know, um, yeah, what was it? It's true too. Oh, but just. Just in general, what an amazing family and what, what they achieved, you know, it was just phenomenal. Yeah. They meant the lot to the territorial scene. When we keep talking territories, they definitely meant yeah. the lot, especially in the Texas territory scenes. Yeah, yeah. yeah World Class Championship Wrestling, I mean, that was the hottest commodity in the 80s. Everybody yeah. wanted to wrestle in Texas and wanted to wrestle at World Class. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. your thoughts on the Von Erics. The Sportatorium. What a, what a hall. Yeah. What a... What a holy grail uh, building yeah. uh, for professional wrestling. Can I just add something to that kind of the dry? It's Jim, Cor- Jim Cornette says, because he would say the same, and at the end of it, he'd go, what a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> that's you, that's you. Um, but, like, uh, you, you, you wonder, like, for as good of wrestlers as everyone was, <laughs> yeah, there, there was such a darkness around this family, yeah. and you wonder uh, about the dad... And the demons that he had that that pushed down on on the kids. Yeah, yeah. It, it, but, uh, that, that's, that's if you, if you haven't seen it, check out Iron Claw. Um, I don't think it's that great of a movie. Uh, I think it's a little bit overrated. Um, I, I don't like the character development of all the people. I think it's it's not touched on enough. But uh, and they took out all the brother. Hmm? They took out they took out a brother of the movie too yeah. because it's pretty much the exact same story as with the one that already died too. So there was that too <laughs> on top of it. To be honest, and JP, you could probably relate to this. Uh, the, the the producers and that, but the narrators, he spoke about this and he says, but was the um, the story is just so damn sad that if yeah. you put everything in, then then the, but was it um, it would have had to get the movie concluded because there was no other way to sort of but was it. End it sort of on a sort of a slightly high note, you know, because there was just so much tragedy. Putting it all in would have just killed off the film. I, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I, I don't know if you can relate to that. GTA, but was it GFP when you're doing your writing and your production? You know, I mean, you you definitely want to leave the story with some kind of at least hopeful feeling, you know, because with it not being a true documentary, but being a docu, a documentary, a, a docu drama, um, you kind a of Hollywood want- documentary. Yeah, you kind of want to leave it yeah. as a op. I mean, you're right. I mean, that the, the tragedy of that family had to face is horrible. And the last thing you want to do is go invest two hours in a movie and then you leave going, my God, I feel like I want to just kill myself. Like, <laughs> yeah. I know, exactly. I mean, you want that, go watch Aronofsky for damn sakes. I mean, watch <laughs> if you don't leave a butt. If you don't leave an Aronofsky movie feeling worse than you did when you walked in, Check yourself into an institution because you might be criminally like a psycho. <laughs> Maybe a serial <Yeah>. killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely a sociopath at that point. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. So uh, let's go to our number four, uh, the Guerreros. We're talking about one of the greatest Mexican families. And then, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to go with uh, Gory Guerrero, the father, the patriarch of the Guerrero family. We got classic Chavo, Chavo Sr. We got Mondo, Hector, Eddie, Vicky, Chavo Jr. We got Shaw, and we got Aiden English, who, of course, associated by marriage. I didn't know Aiden English was part of the Guerrero family. Yeah, but he's listed in the thing. I mean, technically, by birth, by by marriage, he is. He is a Guerrero. So uh, let's go with uh, the dry. You go first. The Guerrero family, what what a legacy. Um, I think, like, uh, when you, of course, you, you, you look at it all and you, you look at Eddie Guerrero Jr. as the, the pinnacle of, of the success of the, uh, the Guerrero family. Like, this is WrestleMania moments. Even in, even in WCW, he established the Guerrero family. Yeah. As this. Like some of the matches he had in WCW were, were so epic. Some of his matches he had in Japan yeah. were, were so epic. But uh, 
the Guerrero family will forever be one of the greatest wrestling families. And in Mexico, I guess they're like they they're, they're even more like yeah. if you think about it, like worldwide, they're, they would they're be Mexican worldwide. royalty. Yeah, Mexican yeah. royalty for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah even Kerwin White. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got Kerwin White. Oh, Mr. God. Haney, your thoughts on the Guerrero family? Yeah, I mean, obviously, obviously you've got obviously you've got Eddie, but um, let's not forget what was it about Hector and things like that as well in Japan. You know, these guys were these guys were really what was it um, solid workers over there. You know, um, that, that had some amazing matches in the what was it uh, in the eighties into the nineties. You know, so um, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, what was it uh, f- talent? Not just not not just sort of known for the sort of but uh, what was it in Mexico, but Transcended, I think it was into Canada and um, it was in, in Japan and things like that as well. You know, Mexico Mexico's a very odd place for wrestling because I think that there's a lot of places think that, that they're the actual like, but the, the Guerrero name is just just synonymous synonymous for wrestling. Really, you know, Eddie Eddie is one of my all time favourites, and uh, but was it when he passed? I was just absolutely heartbroken. Yeah. Uh, what was it called? Uh, what was it? You know, what was it? I've met Chavo uh, a few times, and to be honest, he's a bit of a dick. But maybe that was. Just- <laughs> I agree. He, he seems like it on Twitter and all uh, the other things. Uh, but um, you know, but just what they achieved, and and Eddie's run in WWE is probably one of the greatest runs ever. I don't think it'll ever be topped. You know, I mean. It was image 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 JBL. What was it? Um, look, look at look at superstar JBL tells us. I can't remember who was on before it, but it was like a, one of the, the, the like the all time greatest WWE pay per view matches. And JBL, they were going out after it, and JBL tells this story. Uh, what was it? Uh, he's panicking because the thing about wrestling is when the crowd's hot, then uh, what was it? Uh, to, to, normally, what happens is the crowd dies for the next match. Yeah, and Eddie's Eddie said to JF, but was it GBL? Because GBL was panicking because obviously he was getting his run at the time, and and Eddie just says like, just chill. What we'll go out, he says, what we're going to do is we're absolutely going to stink the place out for the first five minutes, you know. And they did. They went out and held all these like holds and boring stuff and all that, you know, so to let the crowd calm down. And then they just built it up and built it up, you know. And and it was eventually that. Uh, it's it's one of what JBL says is one of one of his greatest matches ever, you know. Just stories like that, how how smart he was in the ring, you know, just to manipulate the crowd. Yeah, just, I think that's brilliant for for Eddie to do that when you when you're like you're coming in and you have to follow a match. Yeah, Eddie knew you know, the what... way to do is to to follow uh, with with bad and build it up to good. Yeah, Eddie yeah. knew how to work the local crowds. Whatever put they've always said that he was the best at working local crowds. He knew, okay, if this crowd had more females, let's do this way. If this crowd had more younger kids, let's work this yeah. style at a hell show. If the kid, if it was more drunken adults, let's do it like this. Yeah, yeah, and 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 the story. I mean, all the, the amazing stories about Eddie. Eddie had a Eddie had a, a what was a, a Bible a passage for a, every everybody. What was it uh, when he came to uh, uh, SmackDown or Raw? You know, uh, what was it called? If you listen to like Batista talking about when he went through his his, his divorce and things like that, just how much an amazing person he was that we don't yeah. see. Uh, what was it? Uh, what was it? Uh, stories like that just give you faith and like like so many t- so many times in wrestling, people get behind a wrestler and it turns out they're an asshole like Hogan. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Jericho but, says that uh, he always but, said that that uh, Eddie Guerrero was a real you know, man. You know what though? Yeah. Like, I definitely look at them like the top, like like Mexican wise families. They got to be in the top three, if not like one A, one B, whoever in the Mexico scene. But Eddie's amazing. Like, if, like and unfortunately, a lot of our list. There's always one person that stands out from the rest of the legacy of the family, and Eddie yeah. that's been for years. You look at what he's done in ECW, what he's done at WCW, being defiant. He just goes and turns around and grabs the mic one day and goes, oh, "I'm going to go out there and cut a promo." He had no permission to. It wasn't written in the show, yeah. but he's like, "Screw that!" He was defiant. Like, even the LWO was kind of a defiant thing back in the day. I'm still going at it because of Eddie. Yeah, yeah. 
And then you look at too when the WWE canned him the first time. Yeah, he went to ROH. He went to go to the smaller, the other promotions, and build himself back up again to show, hey, I, you know what? I screwed up as a human being, but it's time for me to redeem myself. But even him showing up to uh, with the radicals, showing up with yeah. Ben. Uh, okay, let's not talk about that name. Perry Saturn and uh, Dean Malenko, like that, like the Eddie's career over the years and with help built the Guerrero family in general. I like. Yeah. And then they're even technically the ex-wife is in a or was in AEW, yeah, and yeah. Chavo had a cup of coffee in AEW too. So it was like the family's still kind of yeah still out there. But now it's kind of at the it's might be fading. It would have been great to see Shao Guerrero to be able to carry on a wrestling. But I know she yeah. had like head issues or something. Like she was dropped on her head a few times or something yeah. like that. So, but but there's also they, let, let's not forget about the sort of tie-ins. With Dom, Dominic, you know, with the, the Guerreros, what an amazing storyline that was, and it still resonates yeah. today. So, and that yeah, was all the, uh, and the that was all, kind of tied into them too. That's yeah. where that Vicky all, showed up for the first time too, kind of on as a TV yeah. character. And, and uh, the other thing I would say, I mean, I'm not like overly a, like a, a Grey Mysterio fan, but the the one thing that annoys me that is a lot of people still say that Ed, uh, Rey Mysterio didn't deserve the World Championship runs that he got. He only got it because of Eddie's passing. Eddie would be the first person, I think, the person that, uh, in your face telling you that's absolute bullshit, you know? Yeah. Uh, what was it called? But, uh, what was it called? Just, uh, what was it? Uh, what was it? Uh, if you listen to people like Ray, you know, they weren't blood-related, but they were brothers, you know, and how oh, we looked sure. after, sure. you know, what was it? Um, just just for him to be that such a genuine guy, like I say, so many times in, uh, what was it, in any sport, or you, you, you become a hero of somebody, and a lot of the time, they turn out to be assholes, you know. Yeah. Eddie was one of the guys that wasn't. He was. He was. He was really what you said. You, you got what you were given, you know, sort of thing. So, amazing talent, and the Guerrero family is just legacies there. And let's not oh, forget. Funny. It's All funny right, too. Guys, we have to move on to the next one. Yeah. Let's yeah, move yeah. on to the next one. Let's go to number three. We're going to talk about the royal family of what well, Canada, and no, it's not the Rougeau family. Although technically, this that family should have been on this list too, as well. Well, we, we wouldn't have time to put all the things. <coughs> We're talking about the Hart family from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. You might have heard of it. It's a small little providence in this small little country. It sits right above America. It's always cold there. You might have heard of it. Anyways, here we go. Members of the family. That's student Helen, the patriarch and matriarch of the family. Here we go. This is just the brothers. Just the brothers, because they were in wrestling. The sisters married wrestlers, and we'll get yeah. to that as well. You got Smith, Bruce, Keith, Wayne, Dean, Brett, Ross, Owen. You got Jim Nyhart, by marriage, is a Hart family member. The British Bulldog, by marriage. Which is documentaries on tonight on Annie. Make yeah, sure it's documentaries on tonight. Uh, the British Bulldog, Natalia, by birth. Uh, David Hart Smith, by birth. And then Tyson Kidd, by marriage, is a officially a member of the Hart family. I'm going to save Canada Dry for last because I know he loves the Hart family. I mean, he like, he hearts the, the family. We're going to go with Shane first. Shane, your thoughts, my friend. That would have been on my list, too. Like, number one, I would have put them number one. They're my favorite family of all times. I probably wouldn't be as big of a wrestling fan if it wasn't for the Hart family over the years. They all made some. Unfortunately, you could also even throw the dysfunctional family members like Teddy out there, but they meant a lot to the territorial system back in the day. Besides that, not only did it mean a lot to the territorial system, developing guys that be able to end up in the territorial system. I've got the luxury to meet Owen Hart when he went base um, in the mid nineties, when he won the European championship. Um, great guy. Um, Brett, I got to meet in my early 20s, so about nine, whoa, 19 years ago. Wow, or something. Wow, whoa, <laughs> um, you're the so, old. Um, they've all uh, like, and the fact, like, my one of my favorite eras in the added era in wrestling when you had the WCW versus NWO was the Hart Foundation and how Brett was able to be. Uh, 
face in Canada. Oh no, he was face worldwide, but where majority of Raws were happening was in the States. Heel in the States, but a hero everywhere else in the world. To be able to do those balance that was beautiful. And Owen, Owen, unbelievable talent. One of the most amazing talents out there. It was too sad that he got cut short, short soon. And it was too sad that he never even had a, like, he should have had a title run early, or not early, but I mean, midway through his career when he branched off and stayed loyal to the WWE, yeah. while the, everybody else, the rest of the Hart Foundation bounced, like, they should have built him up a little bit better instead of giving him these stupid characters. No, I enjoyed him and Jeff Jarrett as a tag team. That was enjoyable with Deborah as the manager. Those guys worked they they and they were close friends in, in the long run too. And it was they worked absolutely well together. Owen with the nation, that was really kind of questionable. But yeah, yeah my favorite, is. they are my favorite professional wrestling family of all times. All right. Alex Haney, your turn, my friend. Okay, can uh, what was it? I, I just want to talk about that person who made the comment. Could we please just kick them out of the chat, please? What did they say? They say they've never watched a Bret Hart match. I know that I'm tempted to kick them out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, kick them out, you know. But was it? Um, I mean, even been born in the like the early late, the early nineties. That's that's no excuse. You know, yeah, it's on YouTube. Go watch it. No, I forgot. Yeah. There's one thing I forgot to mention. I got to see that when I met Randy Orton that same day. I got to see Harry Jr. or Her- Davy Jr. is his key fave name, but I got to see Harry Jr. as a 16 year old wrestle a dark match for that raw taping. And that oh. was when him, that was right. Sorry, Bulldog Shirley died, but they were trying to do the tag team in the indie scene with between the father and son. So yeah, I, I, yeah speaking of the time I was at the Coliseum, I at least had the luxury to get to see Davey Jr. as a 16 year old on a dark match. That's awesome. That is. All right. Yeah. So, you gotta, what else you want to say, Alex? We got to, uh, we got to wrap uh, her up here. Uh, try, try to keep it short. Said, this said person just says, and I'm from Japan. I don't believe you're from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> They're not anyway, big in Japan. Yeah, you know, but what's um, uh, what was it? Um, what's it? I mean, I, the the heart the heart family is just wrestling through and through. You know, you can't really dispute anything or add to what what, what Sean said. You know, um, what was it? They just they just personify everything that I adore about wrestling. They they play a big part in most of the wrestlers that I. They, I they're so enough. they're so adored that Roddy Piper. Uh, wanted to lie his way into being a cousin. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute, that's a true story. Don't you even go there? Okay, okay, you know? okay. Yes, you know, but, I mean, let's let's talk about Bret Hart's defection from Canada. He's, he's now a, an Italian citizen. You know, he denounced Canada to become an Italian because <laughs> because they don't make good pasta there. So, <laughs> And he makes a killer. He makes a killer bolognese. So oh, he does. He does. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's there's that as well. Um, yeah, but was it? I, I'll leave. I'll leave the heart family to you, but kind of the dry because. Uh, but was it? I, I know that you've you're, you're passionate about it. Yeah, go ahead, Canada Dry. So what? What? What can you say about a family? Uh, you start. You start with the 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 patriarch. Stu Hart. Yeah. He he goes to New York and marries some like show show dancer. <laughs> Takes her to Calgary to the frozen tundra, starts a wrestling promotion. Uh but like as much as you say about like uh the Pedro, like he was a very, very good man. Like the story of of, of someone breaking into their into their, their car, Stu Hart grabs him and or or and, and puts him in a, a wrestling hold, yeah, uh, and uh, scares the shit out of him, and then gives him a job and sets him on the right path. <clears throat> like that's the kind of guy that Stu Hart was. Like, yeah, like I've, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you, but then I'm gonna set you straight. <laughs> like that's the kind of guy that that like that, that the father that I would want to have. Like, yeah. Um, you know, like the raising those 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 kids couldn't have been easy. Like how many kids they had, running a wrestling promotion, having a bear underneath your snares, yeah, like yeah. like the the circus that the Hart family was with all the cats running around. Yeah, like 
this is what a movie would be. This movie would be killer. Yeah. Like the Hart family dun the the, the, the dungeon. What a great name for a movie. Yeah. Where, where, um, where would you where would you where would you end that movie though? Because hey, what was it? Would you would you would you end it as Brett's just going off to WWE and WWF in Japan, you know? Or do you incorporate on into that? You know, um, what was it called? Is because a lot of biographies like like stop before like the like like, like the pinnacle, like Bohemian Rhapsody is at Wembley, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, other other biographies only go up to a certain age, like. Uh, like no, you I know would, what? You're gonna do a two part series or three yeah. part trilogy. I right? would. What I would do is I would. Uh, I would end it uh, with a, a just kind of Brett living his life, doing podcasts and stuff at the end, uh, just being happy with his family. That's how I would end it. Yeah. yeah. That'd be interesting. I mean, it's hard to say. I would focus mostly on if I, if it was me, I would, I would focus on attitude era through Owen's death, you know, yeah. Brett yeah. WCW getting injured, not wrestling anymore. That's kind of how you end it. You don't need too much time. Like you could, you want to spend a good half an hour on the early days in in Stampede and all that, and then uh, finishing it up. You only need like ten minutes to kind of have a happy ending with Brett going on podcasts and like talking about how shitty Goldberg is. Would you end it with Brett in the ring with Sean shaking hands nope. and? You, you know, know what though. People feel to forget, though, Brett's kids, uh, Dallas, I can't remember the name of the other one. They're running a promotion in Calgary right now. How and it's, really it is, is having... and it's very popular. Brett sometimes makes cameo. That would be the best way to end it. You have Brett just watching his kids running their yeah, promotion. Yeah, smile on his face with the kids yeah. wrestling. Yeah. 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 I'm all right with that. I got no problem with that. All right, let's go to our next one. <laughs> what a warrior today. Wow. Try try and keep your your answers for pretty quick because we yeah we're running late yeah uh, here we go this is uh yeah we're talking about the greatest family in Mexico the Guerrero family let's talk about the only family that comes from Samoa and the only and 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 we'll talk about the Anawa family here are some of the Peter high P high Chief Peter Maivia. Afa, Siko, Rocky Johnson by marriage, Yokozuna, Rikishi, Umaga, Samu, Manu, Tonga Kid, The Rock, uh, Roman Reigns, Jay Uso, Jimmy Uso, Naomi by marriage, Solo Sokoa, uh, Ava Rain uh, by birth. Tamina. Yeah. Tamina. Tamina Snuka. Yeah. So let's go with Alex Haney. Ain Mr. Haney, the Anawa family. And you want it quick? Yeah, yeah, it's impossible. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, neither. I mean, that was it. All, all the sort of, all the sort of families are are important, but this is the one that, in current time, is probably the most important. You know, in terms of storyline and what's going on, they've got they've got guys. Dotted about the place as well, you know, in MLW and things like that, you know, the family. Yeah. So um, there's a, there's there's a lot there. Um, to, I mean, to cut it down, uh, what was it? Um, Roman's run with the Shield was absolutely amazing. You know, I, I love the Shield. Amaga to me is probably one of the one of the one of the wrestlers I would put in the, like, my top three of. I wish they I wish they were. What was it? Um, we're still around. I just thought he was phenomenal. You know, I, I just loved that guy as a as the monster guy heel that he was. You know, yeah. he just uh, what was it? He's so talented. You know, and it's just uh, what was it? We talk about Owen. You know, what was it? Uh, different circumstances, but but was it? Boy, it's so sad that that guy's not with us anymore as well. You know, so talented. Um, usually, probably we'll talk about more common ones. Tamina, I think Tamina's an absolute phenomenal talent. That yeah. She's never given the opportunity to to show what she's show, show what she's got. She but needs like, a title yeah. before yeah. she. Ends. You know she's a, why they, why they've not built her as the monster heel that she she could be. I I do not know. It, it, it just perplexes me why that's the case. Um, what was it called? And then obviously, you, you've got the sort of other ones. Uh, what was it? 
like the like the Bucks, I'm not a big fan of the Usos. I don't like all that super kicking bollocks. So they can you can forget them. Uh, <laughs> what's it called who else? Who else did I forget? Um, what was it? Yeah, and obviously you've got you've got the Rock and Rocky and think uh, Rocky Johnson things like that. You know, so uh, what was it? Um, that's a bit before my time, but uh, obviously you've sort of read read that. I know in the Rock TV series they sort of sort of painted that family in a sort of different light than they really were. You know, they were. Uh, what was it? We talk about Matthews. Apparently, uh, apparently, what was it? Um, they were a bit sort of troublesome at the time. Shall we say? Some of that. What does the Noah family mean to you in wrestling? Um, the, the, the mean. The, the, what was it? Uh, they're probably they're probably the most dominant family in wrestling yeah. over the. You know, uh, what was it? Not saying like not to put it on, but as the most important. I think that's the hearts, but probably the most dominant because of. The, the, the family with the, the biggest guys, you know, just absolutely dominant. Yeah, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, the, the biggest heel family, shall we say. Yeah. Can't be wrong with that. Let's go with Shane. You know what? Just like the Hart family, this kind of topic really needs its own episode. It's hard to digress everything. I'll have to say my favorite out of the family, this might be an unpopular uh, opinion, but Yokozuna. Because yeah. not only, like, if you hear so many stories, including Rikishi, saying that how much Yokozuna gave, and he made himself broke but keep being such a giving man to his family. Rikishi said he was trying to get a down payment for his house. Yokozuna gave him a check, and it was like a, a six figure check or something like that to put the like to buy the house right there and then. Like yeah. so, and then his runs were impeccable. Like when I went to WWF uh, in International Incident, Jim Cornette was the Manager for Speak of the Heart Foundation, Bulldog, Owen Hart, and Yokozuna versus Odd Man, Sid Vicious, and uh, and Shawn Michaels. But the presence, the presence Yokozuna yeah. had in that ring with Mr. Fuji on the side and Jim Cornette on the side. It was just amazing. So, yeah, I'll make it quick and I'll just focus. Yeah, strictly Yokozuna and his run alone, man. He was one of my – he would be my favorite out of the family. But, yes, with no denying Roman Reigns – is the chosen one out of the family right now. So yeah. let's not forget Yokozuna with Owen Hart as well. They were a, a great tag team. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that's right. No, before they did the triple, before they did the triple, it was Owen Hart and Yokozuna as tag champs. So yeah. they, they always had that. Odd team. I, odd team. <laughs> so literally, you had the two most powerful wrestling families as a tag team champions. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Let's go again to dry really quick. All right. Um, so, I'm going to sum it up as this. How important Roman Reigns is <laughs> to the Anoa family's legacy. Yeah. Without Roman Reigns, it's almost forgotten. It's yeah. dead. Yeah, it'd be dead. He, he ties it all together. Because even <laughs> when The Rock was the champion, they did not focus on that at all. No. So, even now, like, with The Rock, being back part of it. it. It is so pivotal to that family's legacy. And it's so cool to, to kind of like Roman and the rock being that glue that, that puts the spotlight on the whole family and what they did. So props to the rock and props to Roman Reigns. Yeah. So we lay and leave the best for last. Okay. Of course are considered to be the first family professional wrestling without them we wouldn't even have a reason for a podcast this is a guy who hedged his bets started with roderick james mcmahon went to vince senior wow. vince jr his wife linda how much longer we don't know uh then the shane the stephanie and of course the son-in-law triple h we're talking about the mcmahon family mm. who took wwe from a regional promotion okay, <laughs> all the way. Uh, I that mean, fitting, fitting music for sure. Um, basically took it from a regional promotion and made it an international juggernaut. Let's talk about the McMahons. Let's start with our resident Canadian. Canada Dry, you go first. All right, so the McMahons, uh, we'll keep it short. Without them, there's no WrestleMania. Without them, there's yeah. no there's no there's no drawing boards. There's no canvas to paint. Yeah. 
So they really revolutionized uh, professional wrestling and made it global. Yep. They made it from a, a sideshow into something more forefront and props to them for that. Uh, we're not going to mention uh, any of that. You know what? When you when you do stuff like this, shit, shady shit's going to happen. When oh, you yeah. when you have that power, corrupt shit is going to happen. It's just part of the game. Yeah, I read, a, I read a great article years ago that about seven out of ten CEOs of major corporations are psychopaths. Oh yeah, yeah. My old my old CEO is a psychopath. Yeah. I'll quickly just spit it out there right now, too, because I know we're running short of time. I honestly forgot the McMahon family. Like, I would have put them on my list because I'm thinking of wrestling accolades. But, yeah. yeah, we wouldn't be where we would be without the McMahon family, starting with Vince Sr. kind of laying the paved ways. But, yeah, if it wasn't for McMahon, like, we could all say about Crockett Promotions, but they were never going to go global if there wasn't the WWF back in the day. Yeah, Vince screwed a lot of territories over, but at the same time, if that didn't happen, we would not have what we're watching today and none of, none of this exists. Yeah, so, they yeah, would have been broke anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So we yeah. got to give credit. We got to give credit where credit is due as much. You got to separate the art from the artist once again. So, but yeah, yeah that's all I'll say yeah, about it. I mean, Vince, Vince Jr. hedged his bets. He went and yeah. stole Hulk Hogan from the AWA. Yeah. He got the Iron Sheik. Yeah. And got Roddy Piper to be the main villains for the show. Sheik to drop the belt from Backlund to Hogan and be the intermediary. Everything heel wise was built on Piper and Hogan. Yep. Which led to WrestleMania one. And the fact that he did this and then bought out competition that try to outspend and outmarket him yeah. the cream rises to the top say what you will about the mcmahon family the shady dealings all this other bull crap yeah. the fact of the matter remains we don't have wrestling without them alex haney your thoughts on the mcmahons yeah pre uh, pretty much the same so so supposedly the, the the speculation online is linda and vince have been divorced since 2006 or yeah. separated yeah 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 so uh what was it called um but yeah, I, I mean, uh, what was it? Let, let, I mean, just they covered everything. I mean, just going back to the sort of territory thing, people talk about how the, the WWF destroyed the territories. Let's not forget the territories were trying to destroy the WWF. Yeah. You know, the reason that the reason Vince had the money for WrestleMania was because he, he bought a little company in Georgia, and and they basically, uh, but was a strong armed them to give them back. Uh, but was it? Um, and they gave him. They thought they gave him enough money to go away, but instead, <laughs> uh, but instead he created a pay per view called WrestleMania. And uh, but not not the colossal tussle name that he wanted to use. I don't believe that for a minute. Like, like, but was it? Uh, that, that's that. Like, listen, you shouldn't believe everything you read on the internet. You listen, know? I, this is my thoughts on Vince McMahon. Really quickly, is that he had a lot of great minds around him. Yeah. No. And it, had he it, not it, had those great minds. It wouldn't I, be quite what it was. I, I, disagree. I, I disagree totally on yeah. that. There was three guys. There was three guys. Uh, what was the, the Vince? There was Vince. There was um, what was it? There was Howard Finkel. Okay, and there was Pat. Who was credited with WrestleMania? Yeah, and there's Pat Patterson, right? Yeah. The, oh, Jerry Briscoe too. Yeah, yeah, Jerry Briscoe. Yeah. Well, yeah. But uh, initially, they were the three guys. You know, uh, what was it called? I, I think the I do know. But very much, very much, the WWF was very much a uh, what was it um, the way AEW is it now until uh, like ninety seven, you know, uh, what was it when when they started to blow up? But it was only a small amount of it. If you go listen to Jim Cornette's court, uh, what was it um, podcast? <laughs> he talks a lot about the what was it the dining room, and it was how it was all done in Vince's dining room, and then uh, overnight it all changed because Vince Russo came in. But uh, yeah. I, th I think I think you're doing that at a deficit service here, but that's just my opinion on that. But yeah. um yeah, there's nothing else you can say about you can nothing else you can say about it. Basically they created the modern the, the, the modern wrestling world. They created the pay per view, you know. If you want to talk about if you want to talk about the McMahons, the McMahons were uh, what was it no but people don't talk about too much is they were behind the Anoki and Ali match. But Vince McMahon was right there. He was one of the ones that was uh, organizing all that, you know. Yeah, it was a shit show. 
But it was the first yeah. thing that they, I think they messed up on was not bringing in uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Lodka from Taxi. Yeah. <laughs> Andy Kaufman. Yeah, Andy Kaufman. Sorry, it was something. Yeah. They, yeah they I said, you know why they didn't bring it? Do you want to know why he didn't bring him in? Because he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He might have been dead by then. Yeah. No, but he went to, before he went to Memphis, he went to Vince McMahon Sr. Yeah. And he said no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, but, but that, yeah. But Vince McMahon, yeah, Vince McMahon Sr.'s, I mean, uh, what was it? The, 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 what was it? Andy Coffin thing, again, is painted on a, a positive light. They had to do a lot of fighting to get that, you know? Hey, was yeah. if, if you go actually walk, go watch the uh, the stories about it. It didn't happen overnight, you know. Men, yeah. The guys in Memphis went for it as well. Hey, yeah. was it, you know? So what was it? Um, yeah. Sometimes you just need to take that risk, you know. But yeah. I think that wraps up our show. Yeah, um, can I, can this I, is can our I, family. Can... We've almost been gone two hours. Jeppe, you want You want to? You want to wrap her up here? Yeah, I'm gonna wrap I, it up really quickly. Thank... Huh? Can I just? He's the forgotten one family, the most important family of them all. Let's not forget the WWE is part of the what was it the what was it the Brady family universe. So um what was it Oh uh, yeah, the Brady's, yes. We yeah. have yes. So, Brady. so they, Marcia, are the, Marcia. They, are the, <laughs> they are the most important family in this. The Brady Bunch. Can't beat it. All right, guys. Anyway, the Brady Bunch here in the four squares. <laughs> all right, let's get of our show, of course. You can multiple ways you can support us buy a t shirt pro wrestling tees.com forward slash half and wrestling. You want to donate your money to us? Hey, big shiny matrix at hotmail.com sends you directly to PayPal. There's other ways to get in touch with us. All you got to do is just look below in the description, it'll tell you everything you need to know. So, on behalf of Canada Dry, on behalf of the saltiest man on earth, Mr. Haney, on the experience called Shane, I am the JFB. Uh, remember that some you thumb, thumbing yourselves down. Remember that sometimes when life is hard and it kicks you in the nuts, you need to you need to stay on the ground for a few seconds. You know, recover your 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 bearings. You got to change. It's, it's okay to be down. It's not okay to stay down. You need to reach out to to all those around you for help. You need to pick yourself up, dust yourself off. Raise your fist in the air and say, just keep fighting. Uh, hit it. This has been an effing worldwide media production. You can find us on all social media platforms. like Facebook, Twitter, and others. Head over to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash effing wrestling. And while you're there, click like and subscribe. Want some swag? Head to our store at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash effing wrestling. You can find all these links and much more at our awesome website, FNWrestling.com. As the JFB always says, you can book it. <laughs>